couple more minutes there. Uh, we'll open it up the floor over here. Dylan Davis to the right with Dil with uh, Delaware Gazette. Kyle, was there a little bit of a time where you needed to kind of just settle down? Were you a little amped up to start out that game? And I guess, was there a particular point where you kind of felt like you settled in? Um, yeah, I feel like early on, on that first drive, I thought we did a pretty good job of moving the ball, um, made some plays, and obviously went down, put a field goal up. Um, but I think uh, just for me, at least, I feel like I just needed to ease into the, the pocket a little bit more. Um, you know, obviously, they're a really good D-line, um, but I thought our line did a really good job today, and I felt like the more and more uh, plays we started running, the more and more they started to wear down. So I felt like we did a good job um, just continuing to, to play, and I, I need to do a better job, I think, early on. I'm just, uh, I wouldn't say relaxing, but just calm in the pocket. You know, led your team to, or helped lead your team to a win on the road at Notre Dame, another top 10 showdown here at home against Penn State. I guess, how have you seen your own confidence grow? And I guess, where, where do you see yourself being now compared to where you were on that road trip to Bloomington? Yeah, I think the biggest thing, uh, like you said, was the, the confidence factor of it, um, just the comfort level too. Um, I feel like the offense, we've definitely grown. Um, you know, I feel like we did a good job of moving the ball today. I thought a few times in the red zone, you know, we stalled obviously uh, and didn't put up a touchdown. But for the most part, um, especially in the second half there, I feel like we were really moving the ball. Um, how we wanted to, and so I think it's just continuing to figure out how to take those next steps, how to continue to uh, put points on the board, because obviously a defense played lights out today, so I think if we can really just, um, you know, mix our, our um, offense and with the way the defense is playing, it's going to be scary. Over second row left, Lori Schmidt, Columbus Dispatch, and then Nathan Baird. Kyle, I'm sure you're a guy who is aware of what's going on in the college football landscape. What do you think that a win like this does for you guys? Yeah, I think um, the top 10 win, I think it's week seven or eight in the college football season now, and we have two top 10 wins. Um, so I think uh, in terms of resume, I don't know if you know we could have a better resume right now, uh, but that doesn't mean anything if we don't continue to win, uh, don't continue to stack these games. Um, and I think ultimately everybody in that locker room knows you know, it's the next game mentality, and as long as we continue to keep winning, everything else will take care of itself. Resumes, real quick. Um, reading between the lines of Ryan Day's comments up here, he seemed to be stumping for Marvin Harrison for Heisman. Um, you see him every day. Could you speak to what kind of candidate he is for an award like that? Yeah, I mean, if it's truly the award that goes to the best player in college football, I don't see how he's not you know, in the mix. I mean, obviously, uh, what he's done, uh, especially these last few games, I think, you know, I don't know if we've seen kind of a stretch like that, just how consistent he is, um, how reliable he is. Um, so, obviously, you guys um, say it just like I do. He's, he's done a great job, and obviously, he's a lot of fun to play with. Right here in the front row, Brendan Gulick, Buckeyes Now on Sports Illustrated. Kyle, I, I know when you're playing in a game like this, you're, you're focused on the game that's in front of you, right? You're not thinking about Notre Dame. But you just referenced you got two top ten wins now in the first seven weeks of the season. How much more confident in your own ability did you feel coming out of that Notre Dame game? And did it help you settle in when you were playing in an environment like this? Yeah, I think uh, especially a game like that um, with the type of opponent that it was in Notre Dame, who I think is a really good team, um, as well as the environment. You know, I don't think you can really draw up, especially early on in the year, a tougher game um, for a team to go into, and getting that win was huge. And you know, I, I know for myself, and I think as uh, for the rest of the team, that was a huge confidence boost, being able to go in there and get a win. Um, and so, we obviously got back from that game, tried to correct what was wrong, but at the same time, um, you know, we knew that if we can continue to use that momentum, rolling, it's going to be it's going to be a good year. A quick follow up. There's been a lot of attention for Marv and the way he, he makes incredible catches. The the throw you made to Cade Stover down the seam where he caught the ball over the top of a defender. Can you touch on what you've seen from Cade and his work ethic trying to develop as a receiver so he can go out and make plays like that? Yeah, I think. When I first got here, it was Cade's third year, and at that time, he was kind of bouncing back and forth between linebacker and uh, tight end. And then just seeing the work that he's put in um, over the past few years, especially with uh, Coach Bailey, um, you know, I think the work speaks for itself. I think he's always been a very physical presence. I feel like he's never um, lacked anything in the run game. Uh, but then just seeing the work that he puts in in, uh, in his route running and his ball skills, all that, um, I think it's really starting to show. And uh, if teams want to, you know, give Marvin extra attention, you know, that's going to leave other guys with, you know, one-on-one -on -one situations like you saw there. And uh, obviously, he went up, made a great play, and he's been doing that for the entire season. Uh, over to the left, Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com. 
Kyle, a year ago, this defense gave up some of those explosive touchdowns, and it left the offense at times in a, in a place where now you guys had to go out and, and sort of you know, make up for that. With the defense playing the way it is this year, and they obviously had you know, made a point of improving there, but the way the defense is playing this year, has it changed the vibe around this program at all? Like week to week, is it just a, a different um, relationship that is, is happening right now? Yeah, I think uh, with the way they've been playing this year, I think it takes the pressure off of the offense. It's not that mindset that we have to go and score touching every single time or else the game's going to be in jeopardy uh, and so just seeing what coach Knowles and you know the guys have been able to do it's been you know I think uh, a huge testimony to their work ethic um, you know I, I know those guys are putting extra hours watching film getting all their checks right and uh, to see them come out and really shut that offense out you know it takes a, a lot off the offensive shoulders. Okay, we're gonna we're at the point of two and done on both sides. We need to start wrapping up with JT Tui Molao in the back over here to the right. Andy Backstrom, Slutter Monroe. Uh, Kyle, when you got a game like that, and you know maybe you would have liked to play player uh, play better, but ultimately you get the win. Uh, as a leader of this team, like how do you process that? I guess in the moment, and then after that. Yeah, I mean, obviously. Um, regardless of how you play, getting a top 10 win is uh, really good. And, um, you know, obviously I think we'll use this momentum and keep it rolling. Uh, but at the same time, you go back and you watch the film. And I think I said this when we played Notre Dame. Um, you know, you get a, a top 10 win and you go back and watch the film, there's so much room for improvement. And I feel like obviously we've taken steps in the right direction since that game. I think we've definitely gotten better. Uh, but at the same time, like the, the sky is the limit for this offense and for this team. And so I know going back and watching the film, there's going to be plays obviously I want back. Um, you know, I think there's, there's good, but then there's, you know, some things that we got to clean up. And, you know, I can only imagine how good this team's going to be once we really reach that peak potential. Uh, over to the left, uh, Joey Kaufman, Columbus Dispatch. Kyle, this is a game for Marvin where, he, where Emeka's not here, and he said Penn State was giving him more safety help. It seems like there was a lot of focus on their end of trying to take him away, and yet he has a day like he has. What, what, what did he do today, you think, that allowed him to produce as much as he did? Yeah, I think um, regardless of the coverage, um, you know, in the back of my mind, I know there's a good chance Marvin's going to get open. And so anytime they gave me uh, an opportunity to get him the ball, and that's what they're representing, that's what I try to do. And, um, you know, obviously he gets the attention that he deserves, and rightfully so. And I think that opens up other guys. But at the same time, you know, you can't double him all game. You can't, you know, give him extra coverage all game. And there's going to be some one-on-one -on -one situations. And, uh, you know, I've, I've said this, and I'll say it again. There's not a matchup in the country if Marvin's one-on-one -on -one that I don't like. Uh, over to the right, Jeremy Birmingham, Rivals, the podcast. Kyle, uh, how close do you think the offense is to being where you want it to be? To both yourself personally, but then just the little ticks that seem to be off. I mean, how, how close do you think it is? I think we're really close. Uh, you know, you go back and you watch the film and you ask yourself, okay, what is holding us back from scoring on every single drive? And it's small details. And whether that, that's me or the whole line or the receiver, whatever it is, um, you know, it's just it, it's the little things that can easily be cleaned up. And I feel like looking back on the film from week one, there's like, okay, there's a lot to clean up. And then I feel like every single week we're getting better and better. So now it's how can we continue to minimize those mistakes, continue to minimize those errors, and continue to build? Because like I said, I think the sky's the limit. Bigger picture question. How do you develop chemistry with a wide receiver like Carnell, a young guy? You obviously, years with, with Marv and Julian and Emeka. I mean, how do you develop chemistry with a young receiver? Yeah, I think the biggest thing for him that he really improved impressed me with was when he got here, he had a really good understanding of just defenses and uh, how his route um, you know, changes based on what they're playing, where, what kind of leverage to attack in a certain route. And so anytime a young guy has that kind of football IQ, it makes my job a lot more easier. And then I think just getting as many reps, with you can, as, many reps as you can get with him um, and just continue to build that chemistry. And I think he's taken some really good strides. And, um, you know, obviously I think the sky's the limit for that kid. And, you know, I'm so, so excited to see where his career takes him. Final question for Kyle. Dan Hope, 11 Warriors. we got to wrap it up with JT, please. Yeah, Kyle, I mean, you guys have had a knack, whether it was, you know, Notre Dame, Maryland, today, where when you guys have needed a drive in the fourth quarter, you've been able to come up with it. What do you think it is that's kind of allowed you guys in those clutch moments to find that another gear? Yeah. Um 
I think that's a good question. I think the, the biggest thing um, is what we talk about is just competitive excellence. When uh, someone needs to make a play, uh, whether that's me just putting the, the ball in a one-on-one -on -one situation, letting a guy go up and make a catch, or um, someone winning on a route, or the line making a, a, a good block up front and opening up the run, whatever it is, I feel like the guys have responded to that every single time. And um, you know, obviously, we would like to, to get that going early on, um, but I would much rather uh, have a team say that you know we start slow and, and finish really well, then vice versa. Um, so I think we just need to continue to, to keep building on that and, um, and and ask ourselves how can we do that earlier in the game. And one final question from Tim May. Yeah, to follow on that. Uh, when you see uh, uh, Marvin just break wide open on that drag route, I mean, well, what is going through your mind at that moment in a game? The, maybe the best receiver in the country is wide open. Just don't screw it up. I and mean, what what's going on there? I mean, after all the struggle today. Yeah, no, I think um, we had a, or I think they called a timeout right before that play, so we were able to talk it over on the sideline. Uh, we got the look that we wanted, and obviously he, he ran a good route and got open, uh, and so it was just my job to get the ball in his hands and, and let him go to work. Great. Kyle, thank you very much. Thanks. Congratulations.